Hi, this is the Business Guy with Asset Protection Planners coming to you from my backyard. We're gonna talk about asset protection. Today, we're gonna to talk about the difference between the offshore trust and domestic trust. Some of the states recently have developed laws that protect assets from lawsuits that where you can be the beneficiary of the trust and also the settler of the trust. And before these laws were enacted, you had to actually uh, give up control of the assets and also give up ownership of the assets in order for a trust to protect them. So this is a, a changed recently. So places like uh, Nevada, Wyoming, Alaska, Delaware, South Dakota, they develop laws where you can set up a trust as the settler. The settler is the one who has, you know, like calls our office and has us set up the trust. And then that person can also be a beneficiary of the trust and still receive uh, asset protection. Of all the states, we like uh, South Dakota the best because they have the strongest statutes and the shortest statute of limitations for fraudulent transfer. And what that simply means is you transfer your assets into the trust and it's protected from uh, somebody saying, aha, you moved the assets away uh, in order to avoid a creditor. And so there's a certain period of time you have to have the trust established and the assets in it, that challenge is null and void. So these laws have been enacted by certain states. Now there's also the offshore trust, which we talk a lot about on this channel. And we talk about the Cook Islands Trust south of Hawaii. We talk about the Asset Protection Trust in Belize, which is in Central America. And also talk about the uh, Asset Protection Trust in Nevis down in the Caribbean. So those are the three jurisdictions that offer the strongest asset protection statutes. So let's compare, if you said up a domestic trust compared to an offshore trust. What's the difference? Well, the difference is what we've seen, you know, this case law, how the courts actually interpret the law and how these trusts have held in actual courtroom. That's the important thing. It's not just a theory that something should work, but what we really want to know is, does it really work in reality where the rubber meets the road when somebody has the legal bullets flying at their head? Does it work? And what we found is that the uh, domestic trusts, whereas they're better than nothing, they do not have a very good track record for protecting assets. The offshore trusts do, uh, very, very strong. And here's the reason why. Because the U.S. courts say, give me the money, and you have results-oriented judges where the law says this, but the judge decides, nope, we're going to do it this way. I mean, you could ask any attorney like those on our staff, and if an attorney has gone before a judge, so many times the judge rules according to their gut feeling and not necessarily the law. So in this case, we've seen many of these domestic trusts fail that test, fail the case law test. And this is especially pronounced in cases where the trust is set up in a jurisdiction that does recognize asset protection law, such as Nevada, and the uh, client is in a state that doesn't recognize asset protection law, such as California, New York, Florida, Texas, or any other state that doesn't have asset protection trust law. The judge says, okay, you're here, the assets are here, I'm going to seize them. And what they can do, because U.S. courts have jurisdiction over you know, U.S. people, and they say, okay, Nevada trustee, I order you to turn over over the assets or I'm going to hold you in contempt. And when it comes to the trustee giving up, you know, his or her own assets or yours or going to jail, heaven forbid, you know what that answer is going to be. And so that's the weakness inherent in the uh, domestic trust because we've seen them penetrated regularly. And in fact, I've never once seen it work where the trust was in one state and the, and the client was in a state that doesn't have asset protection law. I've never seen it work, work once. So the domestic trusts are better than nothing. You know, it's like a speed bump on the road. It just doesn't provide the strong asset protection when the rubber meets the road. Now, let's talk about the Cook Islands Trust as an example. I can say that because I've said it more Cook Islands Trust than anybody in the world. It's the best jurisdiction. They've been in the asset protection since 1991. So as of this video, about 33 years ago. And so we've been setting up uh, trusts there for about 30 years. And so what we found is when the U.S. courts say, give me the money, or you have a results-oriented judge that says, well, I'm going to seize the assets. What we found in case law is that uh, U.S. courts don't have jurisdiction over that trustee. So we have that trustee step in and assume their protective role when the client's under legal attack and the assets are protected. They're safe. And if you look at that case law, we've never had a client lose money. The trust established that, we, that we've done, the clients followed our instructions and you know put the funds in an international bank account. If, if people are are confused or they don't have much international experience, international sounds scary to them just because they're not familiar with it. Lack of familiarity 
sometimes triggers fear in people. So the key thing is maybe somebody thinks, oh, you know, US or wherever you're from, if you're from, you know, UK, Australia, New Zealand, or wherever, is safe. Anything outside of our borders is not safe. Well, fact is, you know, that, that doesn't meet reality. You got to look at the data. And the data shows, if you look up the safest banks in the world, the safest banks in the world are not in the US. They're not in Australia, the UK. They're in places like Switzerland. There are also really good safe banks in Canada and Germany. But the problem is they recognize foreign judgments, whereas the banks that we established in Switzerland for our clients in Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, and sometimes we'll go you know, with one of the Caribbean jurisdictions or Belize jurisdictions or Cook Islands Bank itself, they don't recognize foreign judgments. They don't accept, they don't allow the funds to be seized, whereas in Canada, Germany, they do. So it's a combination of using the trust in the right jurisdiction and having the bank in the right jurisdiction. And look it up for yourself, world's 50 safest banks. As of this video, there's only one that's in the US, just one. And it's not even a major bank, it's a teeny tiny farming bank. It's the safest bank in the US. I mean, that's just embarrassing. So the safest banks are not in the US, the safest banks are outside the US. And if you look up the data, Google that for yourself, you'll see. Yeah, the uh, Global Finance publishes a report of the world's safest banks every year. And you'll see that, uh, that the safest banks are not US based, they're foreign. Only the U.S. safe because there's FDIC. It's back, after all, it's backed by the uh, most in-debt country in the world. So it must be safe, right? No. <laughs> No, there are provisions in place in, in uh, Switzerland that make the, the funds even safer. You can see even with uh, the bank where it was, uh, was it Credit Swiss, they had the, had the debacle because they were uh, helping U.S. people evade taxes and they got pretty much a find out of existence. Immediately, the Swiss government took over and that bank was uh, secured by another stronger bank. So the key thing is you've got to know the right jurisdiction. You need to know the case law and you need to take advantage of the tools where your money is safest and you get the best protection. So if you want to set up a Cook Islands Trust or if you have questions, if you have assets, people say, well, how much money should I have in order to justify setting up a Cook Islands Trust or a Belize Trust or Nevis Trust? I'd say about $500,000 is, is the normal. If you have less than that, we have other options for asset protection for the uh, the trust in these three jurisdictions. About 500000 is the minimum. We have a, a Bahamian trust, which costs a little less, that uh, is a good option for those with a lower asset value. We have a lot of people who are you know, facing divorce. Maybe love is on the rocks and they're afraid they're going to get served with the divorce papers. Unlike other losses, once you get served with, with divorce papers, it's too late because they have a financial restraining order, which doesn't allow you to move money. It doesn't allow you to set up the trust and, and put your assets into it. So you the key thing, you want to act early. With a, with a Belize trust, for example, we can set that up after you've been served and it can protect assets as long as it's done like really, really quickly, but not divorce. So the key thing is you want to act early. You want to get the information. And that's the reason why we put out these videos because people want to be informed. After all, this is their money. They work so hard to uh, accumulate. And so that's the reason why we put out these videos because we want people to be informed, be comfortable, understand what they need to do in order to protect themselves when these scary legal attacks happen. Uh, you can get more free information at assetprotectionplanners.com and uh, we have a lot of articles there and other videos you can look at and then, you know, if you're serious and not curious and you have you know the, the asset level that justifies it go ahead and reach out give us a call fill out one of those forms on our website and we're, we're glad to help you you know this isn't a, a promotional video but people want to actually take action i want to at least give you that option so you know what to do so anyway i appreciate it. if you'd subscribe to the channel we try to keep uh, up to date putting out what we think are great videos and we get a lot of good feedback and so subscribe Subscribe. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the information. That helps promote the video too, and I really appreciate it. We're here for you. We really care. I'm really passionate about lawsuits, asset protection. I've been through the ringer before, and that's what happened when I was uh, 29, 30 years old. I got rooked by a con man. He uh, drug into a lawsuit where he borrowed money, and he got me on the hook for it. And that terrifying experience gave me this extreme passion to protect people's assets from lawsuits and not experience the pain that I felt when I was a young man. And uh, uh, so that's, and now we've become the largest asset protection company in, in the nation. And so uh, assetprotectionplanners.com, again, is the website. So we'd be glad to hear from you. I want to see your comments down below. Tell us what you think. We, we'd be glad to talk with you. And hopefully you become a client one day and we get to meet each other. All right. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon. This is the business guy.